एटीन हंड्रेड आवर्स पाकिस्तान स्टैंडर्ड टाइम असलम दिस इज रेडियो पाकिस्तान द न्यूज रेड बाय सुमेरा कंवल फर्स्ट हेडलाइंस प्रेजिडेंट इनवाइट्स फॉरन ऑन्टरप्रन्योर्स टू टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ पाकिस्तान बिजनेस फ्रेंडली पॉलिसीज Pakistan and Syria have signed a bilateral agreement to develop mutual cooperation in fields of education, culture and science. China has said Karot Hydro Power Station will help Pakistan achieve sustainable development. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the All Party Suriyat Conference has called upon the United Nations to summon an emergency meeting of Security Council on Kashmir. The first batch of humanitarian assistance sent by Iran reached at Jalalabad airport in Afghanistan today. Pakistan whitewashed Bangladesh by 5 wickets in the third and final T20 match in Dhaka today. And now the news in detail. President Dr Arif Alvi has invited foreign entrepreneurs to take advantage of Pakistan's business friendly policies especially in agriculture information technology telecommunication energy and tourism sectors He was talking to the ambassadors designate of Japan Norway Poland and the non resident ambassador designate of Cambodia who separately called on him in Islamabad today The president said Pakistan offers enormous investment opportunities He highlighted Pakistan's desire to further expand bilateral trade and commercial cooperation with friendly countries saying that mutual trade needs to be taken to its fullest potential. The president asked the ambassadors designate to encourage businesses of their respective countries to invest in Pakistan which is an attractive destination for investment. Earlier the ambassadors designate of Japan, Norway, Poland and non-resident ambassador designate of Cambodia presented their credentials to the president at a ceremony in Islamabad. Pakistan and the International Monetary Fund IMF have reached a staff level agreement on policies and reforms needed to complete the sixth review under 6 billion dollars extended fund facility. The agreement is subject to approval by the executive board. According to a statement by IMF completion of the review would make available about 1559 million dollars to Pakistan bringing total disbursements under the extended fund facility to 3027 million dollars This will help unlock significant funding from bilateral and multilateral partners The IMF recognized that despite a difficult environment Pakistan continues to make progress on implementing the extended fund facility program All quantitative performance criteria for end June were met with wide margins. The IMF also acknowledged Pakistan's efforts in improving anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism framework. It was also appreciative of the strong revenue collection by the FPR. Pakistan and Syria have signed a bilateral agreement to encourage and develop mutual cooperation in the fields of education culture science technology and vocational training and arts the agreement to this effect was reached during meeting of minister for education shafqat mahmood with syrian education minister dr darim taba in islamabad today the two sides agreed on reciprocal visits of performers artists writers and teachers for participation in conferences symposia and seminars The both sides also agreed on establishing direct contact of organizations working in the field of arts and literature. The two sides will also collaborate in translation of selected literature in the language of both the countries. China says a Karot hydropower project after commissioning would provide stable and low price energy and help optimize the energy supply mix of Pakistan besides helping the country to achieve sustainable development. This has been stated by Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian while addressing a news conference in Beijing. He said Karot Hydropower Station, the first hydropower project under China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, has started the storage of water. The spokesperson said that this hydropower station would generate 3.2 billion kilowatt of electricity every year and was expected to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 3500 tons. This is Radio Pakistan. 
A group of terrorists in a cowardly attack targeted a patrolling party of security forces in Panjgur area along the Pakistan-Iran border. According to ISPR, during heavy exchange of fire, Sepoy Jalil Khan, resident of Dera Ismail Khan, sacrificed his life fighting valiantly. Pakistan's security forces are determined to defeat such acts of inimical ele elements aimed at disrupting peace, stability and progress of Balochistan. Commander Qatar Emery Naval Forces Major General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Soleti held a meeting with Naval Chief Mohammad Amjad Khan Niazi at the Naval Headquarters in Islamabad today and discussed regional maritime security situation and matters of mutual interest. The visiting dignitary appreciated Pakistan's Navy's efforts for maritime security and stability. China has expressed its readiness to work with members of Association of Southeast Asian Nations for a nuclear weapon-free region. Speaking at Virtual China ASEAN Summit, Chinese President Xi Jinping said this country firmly opposes hegemonic and power policies and pursues friendly coexistence with neighboring countries. He also announced establishment of China-ASEAN Comprehensive Strategic Partnership and a health shield for the region. The first batch of humanitarian assistance sent by Iran has reached in Afghanistan's eastern province of Nangarhar. Talking to media in Jalalabad, provincial official Molvi Niaz Mohammad Wahaj said the Afghan officials and head of Iranian consulate Majid Siddiqui received the con consignment including six tons of rice and four tons of medicines at the Jalala airport, Jalalabad airport. Expressing gratitude to Iran, the Afghan official Wahaj also called upon the world community, including the Islamic countries, to help Afghans at this critical stage. Meanwhile, the aid agencies, including World Food Programme and the United Nations Children's Fund, have expressed concerns over increasing poverty in Afghanistan and warned of a humanitarian catastrophe if the international community fails to send assistance to the war-torn country ahead of winters. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the All Parties Hurriyat Conference has called upon the United Nations to summon an emergency meeting of Security Council on Kashmir. In a statement issued in Srinagar, the All Parties Hurriyat Conference spokesperson urged the Secretary General of United Nations, Antonio Guterres, to send a loud and clear message to the Modi led fascist Indian regime that the international community would no more tolerate blatant violations of human rights by its troops in the disputed territory. He also urged the UNSC to strictly ask India to stop a genocide of people and pave way for settlement of Kashmir dispute as per UN resolutions. The chairman of Jammu and Kashmir Democratic Political Movement, Khwaja Firdos and human rights activist Mohammad Essen Untu in their statements demanded return of the bodies of all Kashmiri people killed by Indian occupation forces in fake encounters since March 2020. Meanwhile, India's infamous National Investigation Agency, assisted by the Indian police and paramilitary personnel, raided and carried out searches at Sonawar and Amira Kadal in Srinagar and other places in the territory. Pakistan whitewashed Bangladesh by five wickets in the third and final T20 match in Dhaka today. Batting first, Bangladesh scored 124 for seven wickets in stipulated 20 overs. In reply, Pakistan achieved the target for the loss of five wickets in 20th over. And finally, the weather. Mainly cold and dry weather is expected in, to prevail in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, smog and fog are likely to prevail in plain areas of Punjab. To end the news, here are some of the headlines once again. President invites foreign entrepreneurs to take advantage of Pakistan's business-friendly policies. Pakistan and Syria have signed a bilateral agreement to develop mutual cooperation in fields of education, culture and science. The first batch of humanitarian assistance sent by Iran reached at Jalalabad airport in Afghanistan today. Pakistan whitewashed Bangladesh by five wickets in the third and final T20 match in Dhaka today. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.bk and also watch live streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radio Pakistan News Office.